Hello, and in this Commodore 64 demo peak video, we are going to look at bitmap horizontal scrolling. Now, bitmap screens on the Commodore 64 have 10,000 bytes each. So it's actually quite a lot of work for just the CPU to scroll a bitmap. So how does this demo horizontally scroll this bitmap screen quite quickly? So yes, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks. They are all always very much appreciated. The graphics map debug view shows the bitmap data doesn't actually scroll in memory. And the graphics map for the sprite debug view there shows that the scrolling message is actually comprised of sprites over the top of the bitmap. The memory debug view doesn't show uh, that much memory being copied around. So how is this screen scrolling? With apparently not much effort. Now there are some reads and writes going on here. So we have some writes going into the color RAM. We have some writes going into the screen memory, which in bitmap mode is used for extra color data. And we can see that if we look at the one of the screens, which is actually used as color memory for the bitmap, we can see that it's initially being cleared with black and then the fist shape progressively comes onto the screen. If we use the edit mode here in the graphics map and then start drawing X's, look on the left hand side there, the C64 output is actually showing that it's actually moving the screen, so the fist graphics characters, if you like, are actually just wrapping around the screen boundary. And it's just that the colors for this bitmap are being set to black. So it looks like it's a black part of the screen and only one screen for the bitmap data is actually scrolling onto the screen, but it's not. It's actually the same, same bitmap data side by side for this screen layout because you know the Commodore 64 is just shifting this bitmap data horizontally on the screen. Now if you've watched one of my other videos which was I think Creatures, then Creatures uses a technique called uh, horizontal screen positioning or DMA delay but basically there's some updates going into the VIC chip, which causes the VIC chip to delay when it first starts fetching character data from the video matrix. We're going to look at this in more detail in C64 debug GUI, because we can actually look at the raster and instruction timing for this demo and then we can understand a bit more about what this effect actually entails. So we can definitely see here that we have a sprite grid. We can see the red bounding boxes around those sprites. So the sprites don't actually move. The sprite data actually is being shifted across to the left and the sprites look like they're in high resolution mode so the pixel level scroll is perfectly fine even with expanded sprites. Now using the debug targeting cursor let's see if we can find out what is going on at the top of the screen to try and understand how this scroll is going. You can see that I've stopped it at a certain point where only half the fist half the screen is being shown because this is using what I think is a DMA delay technique or the HSP technique. It's the same one. It's just called different things because different people have called this technique different names in the past. And to be honest, one hasn't really stuck. I'm just moving the targeting cursor around in the raster line schedule so that we can see on the left hand side the instructions that are being executed at certain cycles 
in the video frame, I've, I've paused the execution so that we can actually see one whole video frame here. These D392, D3A2 memory locations are actually being mapped back into the VIC chip. Uh, I have a feeling that the code is using these D3A2 locations to try and obfuscate the way it's using the VIC chip. But because of the way that the VIC chip is banked into memory, all of the, the memory in this lower range of D000 to um, D3 FF are all mapped into the VIC chip in, I think it's 32 byte chunks. So the VIC chip registers are mirrored, I think in 32 byte chunks, progressively through that larger chunk of memory. It's just easier for the address decoding to work that way. So D399 corresponds to D019. So it's just doing some updates to the VIC chip registers here. I'm just looking for what I think is going to be the DMA or HSP routine. It looks like here that it is updating the jump at 1049, 104A, 104B. It looks like it's updating the jump address. The disassembly for the jump address I don't think is updated, but when we do do a jump, we'll see where we jump into. It looks like it's using a lookup table to decide what routine to actually start running. There we go. Progressing through the raster line schedule, we can see it's actually updating more self-modifying code there for the JSR down at 1095 there. Looks like there's a, a slight little uh, load X, dex and branch on the equal uh, delay loop there. And there we go we've JSR'd into a whole bunch of NOPs. Now you'll notice that the, those NOPs, uh, it jumped into the middle of the NOPs, but if you jump into different parts of those NOPs, either high up or low down, you're going to be spending a different number of cycles. So what this routine is doing here is that it's storing it to D391, which in the VIC chip, it corresponds to uh, D011, uh, which is the VIC2 screen control V. So you'll notice that if I scroll backwards just a little bit, just before this instruction is executed, the sequencer state is idle and the bad line state is no. And the row counter is seven up there in the uh, debug information step through until the instruction has done the store, then we suddenly get into the bad line state in the middle of the raster line. Now, when the VIC chip is told to go into the bad line state in the middle of the raster line, this is what triggers the DMA delay technique. Basically, the VIC chip starts because it's in a bad line. The VIC chip will want to start fetching character definitions at that point. So you'll notice now that as I step through the rest, the remaining part of this raster line through the remaining cycles, the CPU has stopped. It's not executing any more instructions because the VIC chip has stunned, it has paused the CPU at this point. And it is currently face, it is currently fetching extra character data. This load A with D392 corresponds to D012 in hex in the VIC chip, which is actually the, the raster beam position, the vertical raster beam position, not, not the horizontal one. So now we are in the display portion and the bad line state has been reset to no. The VIC chip will start displaying character data or bitmap data corresponding to the number of characters that it has read in for the previous bad line. Now, because the bad line condition was triggered, you know, uh, several cycles in or several characters into the actual raster line itself, then it has actually read fewer than 40 bytes for the current row. So the VC base for this displayed position is actually not uh, a multiple of 40 bytes in decimal 
or two eight bytes in hex. It's actually uh, one seven bytes because it was triggering this DMA technique on the, I think it was the, well, it's, it's triggered it some part way into the raster line, but then the remaining part of the raster line where it was a bad line read in that many number of bytes. So that's where the VC base offset comes in. The VC base offset is the offset in which it starts reading bitmap the text screen data. The bitmap screen is tied to the text screen uh, VC base. It uses that as a memory address lookup for, for getting the memory. Now, on the Commodore 64, every eight lines, the VIC chip needs to access more memory to read in the character definitions that it will take for that eight pixels character row. So that's why the CPU is stunned or paused, is that the VIC chip needs to grab memory for every single cycle, every single half cycle actually, because it accesses it twice for each cycle. Uh, usually the VIC chip and the Commodore 64 CPU share the memory. Uh, one half of the, the cycle, the VIC chip accesses the memory, and then the next half of the cycle, the, the, VIC chip, the, the CPU can access the memory. But when the VIC chip needs to read the extra character data, it will stun pause the CPU for an extra 40 cycles or whatever it is for the date to get the data for the scan line. So that's why the CPU wasn't executing any instruction until after the bad line condition uh, completes. So I'm just running through the little calculation there to do a bitwise AND of D3A7 with D01F so that then we can get back to there we go, and that's D007, for example. So now we know that this part of the code is updating uh, the sprite Y um, position. To be honest, the, I don't think the, the scrolling text message actually updates its Y position at any point during this part of the demo, so I don't know why it continuously stores it and, and, and refreshes it, but hey-ho, never mind, that's what it does. So anyway, now we have a look at the code in the in the uh, in the C64 debug GUI uh, VIX cycle and, and CPU debug code, we know for sure that it's using the DMA delay or HSP technique for delaying the the fetch for the bitmap character data. These are just the uh, ROL instructions for shifting all of the sprite data. So once the DMA DMA delay technique has been execute it. It doesn't need to keep on executing it for each row in the screen because the VC base offset has already been uh, tweaked. We don't need to keep on tweaking it for as long as that, that screen is being displayed. But the same code needs to run again to retweak that VC base value to make the screen horizontally scroll. And as luck would have it, we can tweak it so that it um, offsets VC base by zero um, bytes or by up to 39 bytes so that we can actually scroll the entire screen horizontally from zero to 39 bytes. So that allows us to scroll the whole screen. And basically the, the what's on the left or right hand portion of the screen will just wrap around. And that's the way that the VIC chip renders the screen. So thank you very much for watching these Commodore 64 Demo Peak videos. If you like this kind of deep technical dive into VIC hardware tricks, or I might actually go into some SID tricks as well for demos. If you like this kind of stuff anyway, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel. And I really hope to catch you around next time. Have a great day or evening or night, wherever you are.